Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here with RH Max. Um, I just wanted to do an interview with him, talk to him, pick his brains, um, see what he's all about. I love his channel. It's a really good channel. So I just like for him to introduce himself. Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Max, uh, the RH Maximalist. Uh, yeah, as, as the name says, been following Richard for uh, six years and uh, tend to stay in the ecosystem of his products uh, way before Hex, way before Pulse Chain, all that. And yeah, I guess in the community, I'm most known these days for like being an interviewer. So I'm, I'm usually the one doing the interviews um, and trying to interview people in the community and just other people I think are working on interesting projects. Um, and then I do security. It's like my profession too. So security expert, I guess you would say. And then lately it's been explaining like dev stuff about the Pulse Chain launch and all the updates we've been getting from Richard, which have been very technical. So I'm like, oh, I'll do a stream on talking about that stuff. So um yeah that's that's me i mean been in the community i haven't i've been i've been following richard for a long time but i only started uh coming out on social media the last year or so so okay. that's why uh and then started a channel twitter and yeah that's how i communicate communicate with the community these days okay perfect perfect you said that you um follow his other products what other products do he have besides hex and uh pulse chain like yes yeah, he have yeah so the, so the blue chip i would say the blue chip are like hex and the pulse chain pulse x are coming out and then you know maybe wallet or something later on or incentive token stuff like that but then within the rh ecosystem so rh maxi from his ideals so his book sci-vive uh just again following before his crypto products so like uh, uh, that side of him i'm really fond of and then in the ecosystem too like i like hedron I like icosa i like a lot of the stuff that's good for hex good for you know the ecosystem so uh, yeah, I follow different people making products. Alex from Hedron, uh, Dip Catcher from Maximus Project. Just people yeah. are doing stuff that I think is good for the blue chips, as I call them. Yeah, didn't he? Um, doesn't he have a research program or a nonprofit to help extend the lives of people? Um, I know you could sacrifice for that during the Pulse Chain days. During the Pulse Chain sacrifice days, you could sacrifice for that. And yeah, so there's there's a Sins Sins Foundation, which is the charity. Them. Uh, so yeah there's a bunch of controversy around it these days because the guy who he knew there who he's a big fan of and did a lot of work for left and started uh, another one another foundation for medical research for longevity research and, uh -huh. and so yeah for the pulse chain sacrifice you you could sacrifice uh part of it to them and you got like a, a multiplier bonus or something like that mm -hmm. and then ended up being 27 million dollars sacrificed for medical research for the charity that was the deal on that one yeah that's true um and yeah, I, I guess a lot of people don't really know that Richard Harder actually does have a lot of like charities and he does like self-help books too. I'm sure you, you know about his self-help books that he comes out with and stuff like that. So, but people are just mainly focused on his, uh, I guess, shit posting or whatever you would call it. Um, outrage marketing. Out, outrage marketing. And of course, Richard Hart does it himself on purpose. You know, the whatever eyes, good news. There's no such thing as bad uh, publicity, pretty much. Right. So the same thing that he's doing. So it's been working so far now. What do you think about the outrage marketing? Um, you think it's a good idea or it's just what Richard Hart does or he's his own man. He can yeah. do whatever he wants to do. So what's your yeah, of process course. on it? Of course, he, you know, he's, he's, he's billion genius billionaire founder, right? Like he, he has like the brand, he has this awareness. He can, he's free to flex however he wants. Uh, but I think like just at a, just a logical level, I think it works. I mean, you see mm -hmm. the numbers, of holders going up you see stakers going up you see his social media numbers going way up so yeah it may turn some people off there's you know it's controversial from time to time but his mission is glory like you got to start with that to really understand richard like he wants to be one of the best people in the world and right. like crypto is a way to do that you can he's already rich but he can you know become much richer he can help more people start you know start the foundation that i believe he'll do later on he'll start focusing more on the medical research side mm -hmm. um so he does it yeah, it, as a means to an end, not because that's necessarily his personality, but he knows that's how he can be effective. And that's why I think, yeah, I mean, do I like every picture or comedy post? No, no, I don't like all of them, but like, I know it's for the mission. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. It's, 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 it's effective. I'll say that. Yeah, to be honest, um, some of his posts I really hate. It's really annoying, but I follow him. I'm talking about him right now. I've invested in Pulse Chain, Pulse X. So no matter how much I hate it, it's working, right? No matter how annoying it is, right? It still works. So I get... The entire process um yeah. so even now i see that he's maybe changed a little bit he has a little bit less outrage marketing his posts are more technical um in detail um mm -hmm. do you know why he switched um to a little bit more technical type posting now i have a few ideas why um but yeah. what, would, 
what would be your take on it? Yeah. Uh, why is he switched now? I mean, it's, it's a good question. Of course, you know, we're speculating about it, but if I were to try to think about why he's pivoting now, it seems like it's bullish for, you know, pulse chain stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's, he's not going to come out and start posting screenshots and uh, all the, all the dev details, unless that he's like, okay, this is, it's part of like, again, everything with Richard is a mission. Like he's mission oriented. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's trying to get something done. So it sounds like he's trying to give us, you know, hope that, Hey, this thing is coming. Sooner rather than later, he said the other day we're we're closer to uh, the end of the bear market than the beginning at for at a crypto macro level. So maybe we're hopefully we're closer to the uh, the end towards launch than we are at the beginning after 22 months, of course. Um, so yeah, I think he's been doing it because I call it the dev outrage marketing, where he just posts a whole bunch of technical details about all the yeah. stuff and here's the screenshots and he just wants to. I think he wants to inform us more. Like hey. Guys, Pulse Chain's here. It's, you know, obviously been we, we've been working on it. Maybe there's a roadmap change because E2.0 and BSC stuff, but it, it's coming. And yeah, I want to I help you stay more informed. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. To be honest, is um, although it's very, very technical, you're a security expert. I'm a software developer. It's, it's still way too technical for me to understand like 80%, 90% of what's going on. But I'd rather have that technical updates then no updates at all and the fact that he's actually coming out with very technical updates he's coming out with screenshots gives me hope i was very annoyed with him you know the common trope of two weeks two weeks two weeks but now that he's coming out with more updates too i think it's actually a good thing and on top of that i know you say you don't really um you're not you don't know that much about zen but zen has been a lot of zenians have been like attacking him or trying to goat him I honestly feel like a lot of people that are into Zen, they own Pulse Chain themselves and they own Pulse X. So they're trying to use maybe jealousy or reverse psychology. Competition, competition yeah. Uh, competition is your best indicator of better performance. So they're using that thought process. It's so like maybe push him along, push him forward. And I know that Richard Hart is trying to ignore it, but he has two eyes just like everyone else. So I'm sure he ignores it, but he also sees it in the background too. Do you think that maybe competition is pushing him towards uh, wanting to release the chain or is that just you know random speculation? Good question. Um, I didn't think much about it until uh, you know, I saw some few clips and people talking about it and it started coming around to, okay, maybe, maybe he's, he, yeah, you said he has two eyes, but he also has, he's been using the two buttons lately, the, the mute and the block button a lot, <laughs> seems like lately too. Um, so he obviously he sees some stuff, but I don't know. I, I hope it's a healthy motivation. I hope that when he sees other projects around uh, and, you know, launch here and launch there and stuff like that, that uh, he sees that, Hey, like, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that he's, it's going to make things go any faster, but I, I do, maybe that triggered some of the updates. I could, I could read into that that much, yeah. but I don't think Richard moves the timeline around based on how many people yell at him. But I will say that if he sees the other things uh, coming up around him and he, you know, he, he himself, I'm sure is anxious for this thing to get going. Cause you know, that's, I, I've been through all my channel. I've went through the phases. I, I believe like, you know, phase one is like hex, build a following, you know, get the people going phase two, pulse chain, vertical integration, uh, and like really become the best guy in crypto, the best, you know, one of the greatest people in the world. And then step three is like, okay, actually save people's lives with medical research. That's like my speculation of what is, what his mission and what his phases are. So I think he's he's happy to get to phase two and get that uh, get on with the towards the glory path. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I I think that personally, I think that uh, maybe the competition doesn't make him go faster, but it does make him release more updates. That's why he's been coming out with more technical updates and more updates even on V three. Now that V three is about to come out, um, what is the purpose of the V three test net? I guess how is it different than V two or V two B? Um, what, what's your thought process on it? Yeah, so V3 is, well, I, mean, I guess V3 is really just V1, but with uh, ETH 2.0. So the other two test nets, V1 and v, uh, V2B, and maybe there's a private V2 at some point, those were based on BSC. Those were based on uh, what we we're using before. We're forking the BSC, BSC chain, all that before ETH 2.0 launched. After that launch, again, people speculate the roadmap changed. Hey, we didn't, you know, it launched, maybe they thought, it wasn't going to launch, so we're going to go with BSC. But now E2.0 is here. We want to be green. We want to, you know, take take their new features and and uh, you know improve off of their stuff. We want to contribute back to the community like that. So now we're going to fork 2.0. I mm -hmm. believe. I mean, that's a logical case for why things got delayed a little bit too, because now we're doing a completely new fork. So mm -hmm. the reason I say V3 is like V1 because it is V1 for the new fork. 
And uh, that's why, you know, you want to, why, you know, why do we do V2, V1 and V2B before to try to get the bugs out, to try to see how people liked it, to try out the new interfaces, uh, just, just make sure everything is working. So you need test nets in order to, you know, it's like betas, right? Like no company releases a product. Maybe they release the MVP to certain customers, but if you're releasing a product, you want to uh, get feedback. You want to get uh, people testing things, breaking it in order for you to make it solid when you do release it. So yeah. testnet V3. He just wants people to play with it, break it, uh, fix some final things. And I, I, I've even said before, maybe we don't do mainnet. Maybe we do a quick V4 uh, mm -hmm. beforehand just to, just to try out the, the finishing touches because you don't want to work two years on something and then it, it breaks. So Richard is yeah. fully aligned to make sure that doesn't happen. No, it's true. He definitely doesn't want it to break. Um, heck, uh, Hex has been up 100% uptime. So I'm sure that's exactly what he wants with Pulse Chain and Pulse Hex too. So that's, I'm like 90% sure that's the main reason why he's taking so long. He wants perfection or at least as perfect as possible. So maybe that they, makes things go a long time. But unfortunately, there's no such thing as perfect software, right? But you can only make software as good as possible to the point where it's almost impossible to find bugs with it. Um, yeah, so, you can avoid critical bugs. I mean, there's there's always going to be some bugs, but we want to avoid the critical ones. That's the, that's the point. Yeah, the ones that will like heavily slow down the network or make it crash, stuff like that. Um, what would you say is your the the ecosystem that you're most anticipating as post chain related, like liquid loans or hedron or any other coins? I know there's something like a pulse doge that's also coming out. There's so many different uh, tokens and chains. What what are you most excited about? Yeah, so Pulse Doge actually uh, was a free airdrop already, but it'll you'll get it'll still be copied over to Pulse Chain. It's just kind of like got a head start on it. So that exists. That was a free claim uh, a while back. Um, but as far as the projects that are launching like exclusively on Pulse Chain, I think Liquid Loans is great. I think um, it it serves a purpose. Uh, you know, you can take loans instead of having to sell your uh, Pulse. You can uh, and they may be you know uh, that that's like good for uh, reducing the sell pressure too. It's good for, hey, I just need a loan right now. I'm going to pay it back. Maybe people default. We'll see what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of advantages for using their platform. And yeah, that's one of the biggest ones that I can just see where, like, wow, that's something I want to use. That's something I can see a lot of people like benefiting from. And that's what I try to focus on when I when I go over, uh, you know, talk to founders, talk to different, talk about different projects is like, what is good? Like, what is providing utility? What is a positive price feedback loop for Hex, whether it's a derivative, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, something that's built on top of Hex, whether it's something that's like providing utility for people on Pulse Chain. Yeah, Liquid Loans ticks a lot of those boxes. So um, I think, I don't know if they're going to launch exactly when Pulse Chain launches. I think it'll probably be maybe a few weeks or so because they, they said, I think they want to see. They said a month or two after Pulse Chain launches. Yeah, because they want to see, you know, what the market does, if there's a huge dip, you know, they don't want people getting liquidated for no reason. Like they can just wait a, wait a couple of months if they need to, to make sure the market kind of settles down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting. I, I think that's definitely the one of the ones I'm looking forward to using though, uh, because they provide a clear use case. I'm like, hey, they're not just, you know, meme coins, there's a place for them. There's a place for, you know, just other, there's a place for derivatives, of course, but things where, okay, I don't need to sell my pulse. I can just take a loan on it and, you know, yeah uh do stuff like that that's that, that's pretty cool to me yeah um i'm also like heavily looking into polls i mean uh, liquid loans i didn't do the sacrifice for it but i really got interested in so many strategies that's going on there's like a hexacat strategy there's a og 43 strategy haunted strategy haunted strategy yeah that's and in fact i even came out with a strategy <laughs> let me share one of myself i call it like the benito strategy just because like that's really what i'm going to okay. do I'm going to, um, I'm not going to sell any Pulse Chain and maybe I'll sell a little bit of Pulse X, but I'm not going to sell any Pulse Chain, but I wanted to take out the value from that um, while I wait for that. Uh, in fact, yeah. So here's my strategy, the Benito strategy. Pretty much just, you know, take in, I do a 300% collateralized loan right here. So uh, if I put in $6,000, okay. I take out 2000 and then I invest into the regular stock market and then put most of it into stable coins, loan token, USDL, all these different things, right? Because, and that's the good thing about Pulse Chain that um, you can, and Pulse Chain and Liquid Loans and all the other tokens that's related to it, you can make it work however you want it to work because there's so many ecosystems that's connected to it, so many other chains that's connected to it. It's um, it's almost like AOL back in the day, like 1999, 
I don't know, I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember, like AOL wasn't really the internet. AOL was like a walled garden of the internet. And this is like maybe a newer version of that. Or like, I guess a more recent terminology will be the app store. The app store is more walled garden yeah. of your approach to the internet too. And that's really what's going to happen with Pulse Chain with so many different um, layers being on built on top of it. And I'm actually really excited for it to happen. <laughs> uh, my prediction is that it's going to come out May, June, July of this year. But of course, that doesn't mean anything. I don't know when it's going to come out. <laughs> Richard himself doesn't know when he's going to come out. He says that all his predictions are wrong when it comes out. So all I can do he's is right just... about all the wrong predictions. Yes, exactly. All I can do is just guess. But based on how V3 is coming out, based on like rumors that I see on Reddit or Twitter, um, people are saying that the end of quarter two is when it might come out to be the end of quarter two is what it seems like is going to happen. Maybe the beginning of quarter three, with you know, six months or less from now, which sounds good. So all we can do is just cross our fingers and hope pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. Uh, I don't know. I, I, before all the test net screenshots and stuff, I, I had my side set on 2024. I just keep pushing it out very conservative with it. Cause I'm like, I, I don't want it to, you know, bother me. I don't want to have anxiety from it. I don't want to financially plan around something that I don't have enough data to make decisions on. So maybe it sounds like I've, this is the first time in the last few weeks I've thought, okay, we could, it could release this year. So um, could be hard to say though. Hard to say. I certainly hope so. I think uh, we've been waiting on it a while, but software is hard, right? Software is hard. Yeah, definitely true. Yeah. At first I was doing, I was like planning my life around it. I was even planning my life around May of last year. Um, but after it didn't come out, I was like, I was really angry, but then I had to like look back and look at myself. I'm like, okay, you're really worried about, something that you cannot control you're really making it angry in yourself and i don't yes we sacrifice lots and lots of money for it i get it right but <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it that's really what it is so yeah. because there's nothing you can really do about it you just have to be patient and just wait for it to come out unfortunately it takes yeah. a long time but that's that's all you can do you don't really have another choice there's a framework that i like a lot that's pretty applicable uh, i think warren buffett talks about it where you should only think about things that are both knowable and important mm -hmm. because if it's important, but not knowable, then you have no influence. You, there's not enough data to actually reason about it, but if it's uh, knowable, but not important, then why are you thinking about it in the first place? So yeah. Pulse Chain is both, it, Pulse Chain, obviously it could be important depending on your financial situation, what your plans are, what, mm -hmm. you know, what the market may do, even though that's kind of like halfway knowable, not, you're just kind of guessing on that part. But yeah. you don't really, uh, you don't know when it's going to launch. So that's, it's just not, not something I try to like remove it from my mind using frameworks like that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely. Okay. Um, moving on, on a different note, I guess. Uh, tell me something personal about yourself or it doesn't really have to be crypto related, but how did you get into crypto or what do you like to do for hobbies or anything like that? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, one thing that I think is pretty unique that I've been participating in a lot is the local uh, meetups for Hex. So before I was even a streamer, um, I just went to, I was like, oh, there's a Telegram channel for, you know, Washington uh, Washington meetups. I'm like, oh, cool, it's nearby. So I got on there and started talking to people. And I had just got Twitter too. And mm -hmm. so I got there and people were like, oh, are you a streamer? I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I want to get into that. And then the next meetup, we started having almost every month. And the next meetup, I was like, yep, yeah, start a channel. I'm going to start streaming. Nice. So, uh, and then our, our local meetup has turned into quite a, quite a fun one. Like we go to bowling. Uh, we've been doing events pretty much every month, either bowling or uh, we go out to dinner or uh, what else? I think we're planning an indoor skydiving event soon. Nice. So nice. I really like just the local communities. Uh, and we're actually doing a stream uh, maybe next week. Yeah, I think next week we're doing a local local uh, crypto meetup stream where I might mean, like showcase a lot of people that are in the community and it's really helped build it. It's really helped people come out. And I think when you're connected to something, um, I've really been happy to like have this connection with people locally, not just over the internet, but like in real life where it just holds you bit together more. It's more, it feels more like a community when you're talking face to face, like having drinks or bowling or like high-fiving each other, you know, versus just streaming all the time. So uh, that's one of the things I'm, I've am i I've got the most value out of and contributed a lot towards, too. I've, I've set up some events myself, so it's been a lot of fun. Okay, cool. Nice. Like in uh, Seattle, is that where you live? Seattle area? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Greater Seattle area, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, over here, uh, I live in like the Washington, D.C. area. 
to uh, last year it was completely dead because <laughs> um, the market was going down. But now I'm hearing more and more rumblings of like Bitcoin meetup or Ethereum meetup. There's a Zen meetup, actually, the first major Zen meetup that's in New Jersey, New York this weekend. So I can see that the momentum is starting to swing back up. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about that.